Okay, some big news from the world of rugby league here in the UK. The Super League has signed a TV rights deal with Channel 4 from next season, which means we will have free-to-air coverage of the Super League. Now, it is only 10 games in the regular season, plus two postseason games, so not every Super League team will have a home game broadcast, which I think is a disappointment. However, it is a step in the right direction. Um, we have not seen regular season league play on free-to-air TV for over 26 years. Uh, the only free-to-air coverage we get is the Challenge Cup and the Rugby League World Cup. Now, the BBC will retain the rights to the Rugby League World Cup and will retain the rights to the Challenge Cup. Even so, even saying that, Sky still has the majority of games. Now, there has been issues over the, the value of the TV rights deal. It is not a lot of money in regards to the wider game. So the whole TV package that the Super League and the Challenge Cup has uh, on free-to-air and on pay-per-view is, in, in the real scheme of things, is comparatively small. But is this a sign that pay-per-view subscription services for sport are changing? Um, are we going to see more um, professional sport on free-to-air TV? Is this a trend that we're going to see? Because BT Sport lost the FA Cup rights to ITV and BBC, who now share them. And Sky are now giving ground on the Super League and Channel 4 have stepped in and nabbed up 12 games. Um, if you go over to Australia, there is a, a split rights deal between Fox and Channel 9, which is a free-to-air commercial broadcaster, for the NRL. The grand final is shown on both channels. You can, get, you can watch the, the grand final on the NRL website, which is basically the Fox feed, or you can watch it on the Channel 9 feed. So, the Super League and the RFL are lagging far behind their Australian counterparts, and there are also much bigger issues at play for Rugby League in this country. The delayed World Cup is a massive blow. It is a massive, massive blow. Much was hinging on hosting it this year. Now, it is going to go ahead next year. It won't clash with the Qatar World Cup for broadcasting because the BBC has sole rights to every single game. Um, but it is a massive blow. The Toronto Wolfpack and the Ottawa Aces experiment has been a costly failure, and there are reasons for that. And there are people in Australia who, who thought, you know, it should succeed, and it, it could succeed. Um, however, you know, the lack of expansion in the Midlands and the south of England is a problem. Now, the Ottawa Aces have relocated to Cornwall. Is that the right location, uh, so to speak, in England to expand? Uh, we've seen teams like the London Broncos go to part-time status. So there is cash flow problems within rugby league in this country. It doesn't matter if it's the Super League to, to League One to the amateur level. The RFL had to take emergency loans last year to ensure uh, the stability and survival of the sport pretty much at grassroots and amateur level uh, to get it through the pandemic. There was emergency loans that the RFL got. Even with the World Cup, there is still government money being pumped in to the tournament. But I think we are seeing a trend now with sports rights deals getting taken away from Sky or you know, Sky giving up or BT uh, not wanting to have deals or not financially able to keep them. There's been a, a lot of backlash against how the TV companies Sky and BT dealt with the pandemic and demanded rebates, um, citing that uh, because sport was suspended that they were due a rebate because it was in breach of the contract. Um, and we did see Premier League football games on the BBC uh, last year when resumption of play resumed and they had record figures. Now, the Super League has had higher figures in the last 18 months. I think fans, just sports fans in general, were glad sport was back. Uh, is that a, a blip in the trend? Um, but 200,000 people viewing is, uh, is not massive figures. Um, but when we see sport and free to air coverage, the figures are in the millions. So this is a chance for the Super League to sell its product to the wider British audience and not just the niche audience, so the wider British audience. And Channel 4 as a broadcaster has been struggling with losing sports rights over recent decades. It's lost the Serie A football, which it had dominance over in the 90s. It lost the F1. It lost the horse racing. Uh, Rugby Union Internationals, it had them for a brief period. Lost to Amazon, the autumn tests, lost some of the Six Nations rights. So Channel 4 as a broadcaster has been losing sports rights for years. This is a shot in the arm for Channel 4, a struggling broadcaster, because they've had financial issues as well, even before the pandemic. So this is a positive for both Channel 4 and Rugby League. Now, it's a small step in the right direction. I think longer term, I think every 
Super League side should have at least one home and one a game away game broadcast, or at least one fixture from each round of the Super League fixtures, uh, because 10 games I don't think is enough for the regular season to grow the product, but it is a stepping stone. But I think the RFL and Super League have realised that the TV deal with Sky is not enough to support the game. The game is heavily reliant on gate receipts. The TV deal is not good enough. Uh, they had up till this season. So we'll see how it plays out. It is a positive step. It makes the sport more accessible to a wider audience. And hopefully that can lead to further growth. And with the World Cup next year, hopefully we have really good viewership figures on TV and really good attendances as well. Because it is a gate-driven league that is heavily reliant on fan fans going to games. And the TV deal just doesn't support it. Unlike in Australia, where the TV deal is worth a billion Australian dollars, this the TV deal uh, in the UK is worth a handful of millions. It really isn't a great TV deal. Um, and the viewership figures back that up. Um, not enough people are watching on, on subscription services. So we'll see what happens, but this is massive, massive news. It's a shot in the arm for Rugby League in the UK. I'm not sure I'm on the French sides, Toulouse and Catalan, because... Obviously, they're based in France and the French broadcasters obviously have agreements with them. Um, I'm not sure what the French agreement is with the Super League to broadcast games on French networks. But it is a step in the right direction. We will see how it plays out and we'll see if further games get added to this TV deal and the TV deal grows in, down the line. But next season will be very, very interesting to see how many people view, what the viewership figures are like, um, what the feedback is. Uh, who they get to commentate, who they get to present. It'll be very interesting to see the presenting and commentary lineup that they get in place. But there's some positive vibes, it's little steps. Um, it's it's a conservative TV deal, but it's uh, I think a, a step in the right direction. But it would be nice, obviously, to see more games, but no, uh, some games are better than no games. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Place your thoughts below, and I'll have some more videos for you very very soon.